In this presentation, we will take a look at the process for setting up a new employee from a Form W-4 within QuickBooks Online. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in our test file. You can navigate through your own company file and follow along and or look through the QuickBooks test file, the free test file by Google searching QuickBooks Online Test Drive. And to set up a new employee, we will go down to the Workers tab on the left side. So on the left side up top, we have our tabs up top. We want to be in the Employee tab. This is what it would look like if we had the pay payroll set up with QuickBooks Online. And then we would scroll down and we see here that we have our three employees. Typically to add the new employee, we would go up top to the add employee section. Before we do so, also note that as we set up payroll in and of itself for the first payroll setup, as we'll do in the practice problem, then we typically have an option for entering employees at that time as well. So we can enter employees as we go through the setup process. And then of course, once set up, we can add new employees as we go. The add employees button would be here. And then we can populate the data tabs in a similar fashion as we might populate other kind of data input for things like customers and vendors. It has some information that's going to be specific to payroll, some information that is not necessary for payroll, but information that we would need, contact information, notes that we might want to have for any type of contact that we would have, whether it be employee whether it be a non-employee or a vendor or a customer or something like that. The asterisk field would be where the name uh, would be required fields. So we have the required fields up top, and then we've got the information down below in terms of how we're going to pay the employees. As we scroll down to these items, one, two, three, four, and five, we'll see the information we can use to enter this data, including a W-4 type form. So this is going to be a quick entry data form which allows us to take the data directly from the W-4 that the employee would fill out uh, themselves, take that data and use it to input into this system using a screen designed to look like the W-4 so that we can enter that data more easily. We'll see an example of that as we enter new employees in our example problems. I'm going to cancel this for now and not enter a new employee, but instead look at a current employee's information. So now let's go into the current employee, a current employee. Let's go with Anthony this time. And then if we scroll down through Anthony and we have two tabs up top, the employee detail, the checklist. We want to be in the detail and then we could select any of these pencil items and we'll have the same kind of data input screen as we would when entering a new employee or when we want to change some type of information for that employee. So if we select that pencil item, we'll see a familiar screen that we saw last time we have the data up top we're gonna have the date hire information and now we have that familiar one two three four and five if we were to select the pencil on these items then we can go into the changing of that information so it's going to be a monthly filer as opposed to a weekly or twice a month filer so notice the the terms that they use are a little bit different than we might hear uh usually you would you would see you would see weekly or bi-weekly or semi-monthly are the traditional kind of payroll terms. I think the terms they're using are, are meant to be simpler or more simple <laughs> in, in the format rather than kind of having more, I guess, really payroll type terms for the, for the time periods. But we can select our time periods and just note that if you have more traditional terms, then of course uh, you can apply them to the, the terms that they have here. We have a list out of the pay periods on the right based on this information. I'm going to cancel this out and go back to the prior screen. Then if we take a look at item two, how much do you pay Anthony? So if we select the pencil there, we would have the data input for that. We're going to say this is an hourly uh, employee as opposed to salary or commission. These payroll items are set up by default by QuickBooks. So QuickBooks is using these items. Most companies will probably be using salary or hourly and that's all they'll really need in the payroll setup options. But if more is needed, other items are needed, then we can add those items going up to the settings. So then we have the 25 an hour and we have other options down here, including uh, the overtime pay. So if overtime is applicable or for other of these items, the double pay, the sick pay, the vacation, holiday, bonus commission and so on, if those are applicable, 
then we would check those items off as well. If we close this back out, going back to our tab, and obviously we'll, we'll send, we'll view these items when we set up a new employee and as we change the options for them. If we go back into this pencil tab again and go back into the editing, we then have item three. This is where we're going to add the deductions and these are where the benefits are included. So we currently have for this employee, 401k, dental and vision. We can then add more by selecting this item. We will do that as we go. What are Anthony's withholdings? This is going to come straight from the W4. So note as we go on to that, that's going to be that W4 data input screen. So it's designed to look like the W4 to kind of help us out to enter this information more specifically, including the marital status and the number of allowances. And typically we'll get the name from the W4 as well as the social security number. So I'm going to close this back out. We'll cancel this item and scroll back down. That's going to be uh, that W4. Uh, what do you want to pay Anthony? We can have the paper check or we can have the direct deposit and other options in terms of the payment options here. Scrolling back up top, if we go to the second tab, the profile tab, we're going to have the address in this tab, more information, some of it required, some of it not required, but could be useful for just any data, including the home number, the different kind of uh, mobile numbers we can choose, and uh, the gender we should have chosen, and the date of birth information. So then if we go to the employee tab, next tab to the right, we have the employee ID, which is going to be an optional field if we have an employee ID status active versus paid leave, uh, unpaid leave and other type of status options. Have you filed a new hire report for this state? We should check these off if applicable. Have you stored a completed form I-9? Check these off if applicable, the date hired and the location. Uh, if we only have one location, we'll choose, of course, that one. If we have multiple, we can have multiple there. So that's just an overview. We'll go through these as we add new employees. And add For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.